On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. Now, as with always on my tutorials, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, but that doesn't mean you couldn't use a different app and a different tablet and still apply my process and technique and still come out with something successful. But within Procreate, I am using an A4 default canvas size of 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. I also only ever use the brushes that come free within Procreate. I may amend them slightly, but I just use the brushes that come as part of the app. And as such, I'm going to be using with an airbrushing, this soft brush at the top of the list, and maybe the medium brush too. And also the inking, studio pen, again, default settings, and also artistic section, leatherwood brush. Now I have amended this brush and I will explain that a little further later on. In terms of my colors here, I've pre-selected some colors that I feel are gonna be useful. Each of these colors has what we call a hexadecimal code linked to it. All of those codes are down in the video description. If you take a note of those codes and type them in here one at a time, press enter, the color will appear up here. You can then tap them into this section and construct the color palette yourself. Or well, next to the codes down in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free there. If you like this kind of tutorial, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and don't forget the bell notification to make sure you're notified of all my future tutorials as well. And with all that said and done, on layer one, I'm just gonna to go to my colors. We have the top color here on the first row, and we're just gonna drag it from that corner into the canvas, and it will flood fill the entire area. I'm gonna stay on the same layer, but I'm gonna use the airbrushing soft brush. I'm gonna to go to my colors, choose the second color on the top row. And with the airbrush, I'm gonna put it up to 70%, and 100% opacity. And then I'm just gonna place that a few times into the center area like this, tap it a few times, then go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it to about the 70%, like that. Go to my layers and create a new layer. I'm gonna switch brushes to the artistic leatherwood brush. I'll just go and reset the brush, and you can see it's how it is normally. This is how it will appear on your app. You tap on it, spacing, again, it's at 17 by default, so I'm gonna put it up to 30 and then the grain is at 24, and you can see if I zoom it in a bit, it's like a canvas texture. I wanna put it down to none. Go to my colors. I'm gonna choose the third color now on the top row. I'm gonna have it at around 3% size and 100% opacity, like that. And up to about halfway, I'm just gonna do some gestural kind of marks, just vary it up a little bit, but not drastically. It doesn't really matter too much. So I'm gonna do up and down to begin with, all the way across, create some irregularity with that, like so. Then maybe do it again diagonally across, just to touch lower, so the very top edges perhaps don't get completely covered in. And then I can change the diagonal, sweep it across a little bit more, allow it to creep up to the top area just in places, doesn't really matter. Then I'm gonna put the brush size up to 6%, and just go and kind of fill in this bottom area. I definitely want to close all of this bottom area down. So I'll just sort of scribble it in like that. Doesn't matter if you don't get every tiny little part covered in this bottom section, because we're gonna cover it with lots of other things anyway. Then I'm gonna long press on the eraser, and when you tap on the eraser, you'll notice that the eraser now is on the same brush type that we were using for the actual brush, but now you can deploy it as a way of erasing some of that texture if you need to. So what I'm gonna do with that is put the brush size down to about 3% and just about 80% strength. Um, we can just use that eraser just to slightly kind of break into some of these areas and play. I don't want to do too much, but just to keep it a little bit more random. So that obviously are going to be just areas perhaps where it's not quite as uniform as maybe we've created it initially. Just bring it back a little bit in areas. I don't know. It's, it, it really isn't worth spending a long time on this. It is going to be largely obs obscured, but it's there anyway. I'm going to go to the adjustments. Gaussian blur, blur it in to about the 7%. Create a new layer on top, so this is layer three. Go back to my brush. Again, it's still on the leatherwood brush. We're still on the third color, and we're still gonna have it about 3% size and 100% opacity. And I'm just going to tap in a little bit more, perhaps slightly more control, but again, 
we're not going to notice too much of this by the time we're said and done. So just a hint more of this, just to create a sense of slight layers. Then again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in perhaps slightly less to about the 5%. And that will do initially. Create a new layer on top. So this is layer four. I'm going to go to my airbrushing medium brush. I'm going to go to the fifth color along, which if you go to the color disc, it's just, it's a warm hint to it, but it is pretty gray. I'm going to have it at around 2% size and probably around 60% strength opacity. And I'm just going to start doing some kind of tree trunks that carefully piece down from the kind of upper areas here. So we've got some sense of foliage and we're going to bring some tree trunks down from that region. This is just the lightest color that we're going to apply first. And then with a darker color, we're going to go over this, but we need to get a suggestion of the lighter color in to begin with. So we can just start piecing those in. Don't do it with any real time at this point. We've got other features that we're probably going to spend longer on. We just want to make sure that we don't go above the foliage line there at the top. So we're just getting some of these in initially. And then, like I said, we'll go over it with a darker color in a moment, just to really bring out some slightly bigger tree trunks. But this is just an initial. And these are going to be largely obscured again. So I'm just going to then switch back to the fourth color on the top row. And I think I'm going to change brush to the inking studio pen, but it's a good pen because it's nice and crisp and it's pressure sensitive. So if you press lightly, it does very thin lines and you press hard, it does thicker lines, which is perfect for what we're going to use it for. I'm going to put the brush size at around 25% and somewhere relatively high at around 80%. And we can press on harder at the base of the tree. And then as we get further up, just release the pressure and you get a finer brush. Now it is quite dark generally all the way up, so we can go in later and just find different ways of subduing it. But you can have the branches splitting off if you want. Don't worry about going over the, some of the lines that you've already done. We don't have to stick slavishly to them so you can create new ones. Again, it wouldn't really go any higher than the tree trunks you've already created or the foliage for that matter. That's too high, so we want to keep it lower down. So create a variety of tree trunks. Don't agonize over these either. Much of them, again, are going to be obscured. Just layers of trees is what we're going for. Again, they can splinter off. We just need a suggestion that there's something in the background area so it's not looking empty and devoid of detail. So I'm pressing harder at the tree trunk, releasing pressure, making sure my branches don't go too high and just building a series of different trees that can overlap, can grow right next to each other. So you want to create create a really nice organic look. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and maybe just blur it in slightly, just to soften it somewhat. So I'm going to put it at around 4% Gaussian blur. I'm going to go back a layer to layer three and create a new layer. So this layer is crucially going to be underneath those tree trunks. I'm going to go back to the artistic leatherwood brush and I'm going to just start to add some hints of light and foliage behind some of these tree areas. So I'm going to go for this yellow color at the top row here, third from the right, with a size of 3% and lower on the strength at about 30%. I'm just going to start building in just some luminosity and light just to add it to the mix. So you don't want to do too much of this, but it's going to help just to have this sort of mixed in for the background areas and places. We're going to have a mixture of this light color and then maybe some dark colors too. But I just want to have a variety of different kind of tones creeping in there. So to begin with, I'm just having some of this light appear, probably for mainly over this side. I think I maybe just steer it a little bit more in some areas than others. So I'm just doing circular motions now. I'm really going for it. I don't really worry about this too much. Something like that will do. Maybe I will go to the adjustments causing blur and just blur it in to about the 3%. Go back to my layers, the tree layer, create a layer above the trees now. So layer six is now crucially above the tree trunks. Back to my colors. I might just go for the next color of those three. So a slight hint more towards the gray. I'll just go over some of this a little bit, just to obscure, knock back some of the tree 
trunks a little bit too, but not too much. Stay on the same layer, and I'm gonna go for this color, which is fourth from the right. And I think I'm just gonna start going over some of these trees, creating some foliage that just cuts in front too. So again, it's still at the 3% size and 30% strength. Now I can really start building in some of this foliage. It's just more of a background feature, but it adds depth and therefore believability in the end. So keep adding these kind of details really to bake in authenticity to this look. So we can build in some blocks too, so it can be quite condensed in some areas. I like to creep up to the top upper regions of the trees, why not? Up into the more noticeable foliage, that, that works. But then also have it down at the bottom in section. So I'm moving in kind of bands, so not just completely consistently all over, I'm leaving some gaps where it can build up and then other areas where yeah, it's kind of isolated. And perhaps there's just less of it in some places too, like that. I'm gonna go back to layer two, which had our first pale color in the background. And I'm going to go to, again, my gray color, which is the fourth from the left. And with my leatherwood brush, set slightly bigger at 5% and a bit lower at about 20%. I'm just gonna start bringing in some of that color down at the bottom, just to create some disruption, some extra kind of texture that's building in there building it up, allow it to creep up a little bit too. Why not? Again, it's just strengthening some of the dark tone in this lower region. Again, we don't have to be neat either. We can just scribble it in. The effect will build up the more we do that. And it can even extend a little bit further up too. It can just create some variety and contrast between the different layers. I'm gonna then switch to this gray color, which again is lighter. So it's the fifth color from the left. I'm just going to start bringing that influence in here as well. Perhaps just a little bit more of that over on this side. So we get a little variety between there and here. We don't want it too uniform, too cons sort of falsely consistent across the scene like this. Again, this is not something you need to spend too long on because it is going to be largely obscured by so much more that that will pretty much do for the background. Now I'm considering just condensing all those layers. So I'm going to pinch them all together. So now they're on one layer. Maybe just go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in a hint, just to kind of bring them all together a little bit more. So there's zero, I think maybe about 3% should do, and that will do for our background. Now we can go in later on and just pull out some of the trees, bring them forward, maybe add a couple extra ones in there, and that's fine. But for now, that will do. So I'm gonna go back to my layers and create a new layer. It's now reverted back to layer three, even though we've done more than that. But now, yes, officially, now we're on layer three. Now I'm going to switch to the inking studio pen again. I'm gonna put it up really quite far. That's about 100%. Now it's still not massive, but it's big enough for our purposes. And I'm gonna change the color to really quite a significantly dark color. And it's pretty much just straightforward black. It's not quite, you can see it's just slightly different, but it's very, very dark. And we're gonna use this bottom edge now, just perhaps a little bit lower than that to start with our base of our tree. So we can get that in to begin with. And again, this brush is pressure sensitive. So we can use this to build in our tree trunk initially, and then we can have branches that shoot up. And if we have to go over this a few times, because again, it's set to the 80%, that's fine. So I might just have a tree trunk that shoots up here. This is the main area. But then as we get higher up, we can just have it splintering off. And then maybe we can have another thickening here and then more that shoots off in another direction. With branches, don't forget to create and build in some angular components like that. So we're gonna have some thicker branches initially. And again, it's not a huge brush, so you're gonna to have to go over it a few times, which is probably beneficial. You're not gonna be able to do it in one easy motion, but you're gonna to have to go over it a few times. But that helps, I think, in some ways. So don't forget to build in these corners, as I said. Thicker near the base, you need to have more strength where it originates from to obviously hold the upper branches. But when you do get to the upper branches, if you just press on lightly and you can shoot other branches off from it. And if you're not able to press lightly enough, then you could always just reduce the size of the brush. We're on 100% currently. You could put it down to maybe 50%. And then obviously you can use that to create more branches from there. And obviously we can dial it back as far as you need to to create those fine branches. I'm gonna put it maybe somewhere in the middle between the 100 and the 50, maybe 75 is a good compromise. Let's try that. So again, I'm gonna press on hard for the bigger branches as I want them. 
I'm going to have to go over them anyway, and I'm going to use that just to add little details along the way. Maybe there's some little sections that jut out where a branch has tried to grow and then it's snapped off and it's just left a little detail like that. And then we could have some light pressure branches that grow from it. Again, can put it down to the 50%. More tree branches that just grow out from here. Spend some time on this. I think that the more time you spend trying to get these little branch details in here, the more convincing the overall tree is going to look. Trees do take a little bit of practice. It's not about a definite technique. It's more about just understanding what kind of looks right. And the more practice you get with drawing trees and looking at them, obviously, the more you're going to get a sense of what kind of is working, what looks just not quite right for a tree. And obviously there are different tree types, but I suppose we're going something that looks typically like an oak tree and that will lend itself really quite well to this effect. And again, you can just build on some of these little branches, trail off low pressure, build in some bigger ones, spend the time, make sure that they're consistently thinner as they go along. No tree really makes sense for it to start off thin and then get thicker and then thinner again. You're not really gonna get that hardly ever. So you need to just think about it. It's newer, it's not gonna have had chance to grow very broad at the top and also the tree wouldn't support it for very long anyway. So reserve your really fine branches towards the end of the tree or the end of the branch. Not to say you can't have some little ones that perhaps just shoot off lower down but when you've got thicker branches they're going to be reserved for the beginning of the tree pretty much near the tree trunk. And I'm just going to pick up the size of this particular branch perhaps. Maybe have another one that just kind of cuts in front just be mindful that if you press on too much, you're gonna create a thicker section. And you can go in and erase it, but I find it just easier if you try to get the pressure more kind of right to begin with and just create the line that you think is believable. From the outset, it gets a bit messy if you have to go in there with the eraser and try and fix it. You can do, but yeah, try to get it at the first stage with the brush and then your life is gonna be a bit easier. And then we're gonna have branches that really cut low down into our scene. You don't have to do too many. You need to do enough to create a sense that, okay, you know, your tree's got enough branches to support the foliage that you're about to add, but you don't want to spend hours and hours adding a ridiculous amount of branches. Because some of the fine branches that really are going to be obscured, they're going to be too fine to really notice in the larger scene anyway, and they're just not crucial to create the overall effect. Perhaps just add a little bit here to balance it out. Think about where it's leaning. If it does lean too much in one direction, well, you need to just create the counterbalance for it so that it would support itself. Maybe just not have it too smooth either. Create some kind of knobbly bits, some interesting tree roots that perhaps just stick up a little bit along the ground. But yeah, we can define those a little bit better with highlights a little later anyway. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my background layer and I'm gonna create a layer above that, but you'll see it's underneath the tree layer, crucially. And I'm gonna go in with my leatherwood brush and I'm gonna go back to my colors. And I'm gonna start using some of these vibrant colors now. So I'm gonna go fourth in, not quite the yellow, but fourth in from the left on the bottom row. And I'm gonna set the brush size to about 3% size and about 60% opacity. And I'm just going to start piecing in some foliage in and around these branches. So obviously where we have a lot of branches, then we're gonna a, be able to support a lot of foliage so we can really bring in a lot of this in these busy areas and then perhaps where we don't have as much we're not going to have it quite as busy but again you know it could be a slightly more distant set of branch fine branches where you don't necessarily see those tiny little branches but you do get the overall effect of the foliage but either way I'm going to start building it in and building it up we want some of that blue background to remain but not all of it so I'm quite happy to really let some of it become more obscured. And this effect is largely going to be created by the, the real building up of all these different colors and textures. So again, leave some gaps for that really nice blue to peek through. 
but let's start closing down and obscuring some of the background areas. So we spend all this time trying to get a, a background that kind of looks all right, but then the next minute we're going to go in and we're just going to completely cover it up. And that is part of the process. It is destructive as well as creative. Whenever you do a piece of art, you create something, then you destroy it the next moment with something that kind of has to go over the top of it for it to make sense. But I still think it's worth having done the background, therefore it gives everything else a bit of a context and a place to exist. And then those small little areas where it may peek through at the bottom or through some of these branches, then you know it's gonna just give it a, a little bit more life. And I'm gonna take some of these foliage areas, just tap it in, perhaps a little bit more broken and random near the bottom. And then again, just allow it to spread up higher up in the tree. Now we're gonna do this in lots of layers. So you don't need to do every single leaf at this point because we're gonna add darker leaves and lighter leaves to this, but you just need to get started on it. And already it's kind of building in a, a quite pleasant look and effect, but we still have a long way to go with it. Something like the leather, leatherwood brush is absolutely perfect for quickly and really quite effectively building in this kind of appropriate texture. It really has fast become one of my favorite brushes, not only for trees, but for all sorts of different things. So if you've been following any of my other tutorials, you probably see how much I've been banging on about this brush, but it, it really has become my go-to for so many different things. And I don't know, maybe there's some other brushes for you. Maybe you've got a brush yourself that you find really versatile. I'd love to hear about those brushes. If you want to tell me which brushes that you use down in the comments, then that would be really appreciated for me and obviously other people looking at them. Okay, so I'm going to leave that layer, but before I do, I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just soften it in slightly. It is a slightly more background layer. Of foliage I'm going to blur it to about three percent and I'm going to create a new layer on top of that but crucially still under the tree branches I'm going to switch from that color to this end color which you can see is is kind of orangey red but quite dulled out again with a leatherwood brush at three percent size perhaps I'm going to turn it down slightly to about 40 percent and I need to start building in some slightly darker tones and textures too and yeah we just need to vary it up a little bit you don't want to totally obscure everything that you've done, but you also want to create a sense that there's going to be some shadows and some leaves that just really create like a silhouette perhaps, or even whole chunks of foliage that silhouette in some areas and in other areas, obviously they illuminate because the light is shining through or they reflect the light directly back. So you've got real combinations here and you don't need to separate those different aspects. So, you know, there's not going to be a huge difference between the light that reflects off a leaf brightly, and then the light or the, the look of a leaf that has light illuminating through it. At a distance, you're just gonna get that really nice vibrant color effect. And I guess you mind, I can kind of separate those for you. I think when we're used to seeing lots of effects and things in nature, when we see something that kind of suggests it and hints at it, then we can fill in the blanks ourselves. And there's a lot of that, I think, within the art practice certainly for myself anyway. So we're just building this in a little bit, spreading it around. Again, we don't want it to be overwhelmingly one color of leaf. And don't forget, this is just all of the layers that are behind the tree. We're obviously gonna go in with a layer above the branches and then add some over the top as well. So this is just, again, another layer where we're really building up the effect. We keep building it in, spread it around a little bit. Think about where you want a concentration perhaps. You're going to get clusters and clumps of certain tones and colors. It might be, for example, a section over here is probably largely maybe in shadow and less illuminated. And it's okay to have some sections where this happens too. And then other ones where it's all going to catch the light more dramatically and just start to play around with that effect a little bit more. Do not try to stick absolutely to what I'm showing you. It's going to be impossible and more just really interested in showing you how to build up the effect with all my videos and then you can take some of the principles and then create something with it yourself and hopefully when you do other scenes with trees in you might deploy you know use some of these tactics some of these techniques into other pieces that you know you may have trees and foliage as well so that'll do for that layer again I'm going to go to the adjustments Gaussian blur and blur it in Maybe not quite as far, maybe 2% will do. And again, we're really starting to ramp up the effect, are starting to see how it could look overall, and I'm quite pleased with how it's coming together. But 
before we start patting ourselves on the back too much. I'm going to create a, another layer, change the layer properties, the blend mode from normal, which is up here, which is why we have a little N. We change it to add and that little symbol changes to an A. And I'm going to stay on the leatherwood brush still. And I'm going to move, perhaps try this orange that's second in from the left over here. And I'm going to start building in some of these, especially when we get to the center area. Now the sun is going to be peeking through in this region. So we definitely need a bit more of a concentration of really illuminated leaves. I've got it on 40% strength. Maybe we could ramp that up to 60%, still at the 3% size. And we just want to build in some intense, fiery kind of glowing colors. I'm finding the add blend mode really useful in loads of different contexts. Whenever there's light in a scene, if you really want to sell this sense of light, then it's a super useful blend mode to use. Spread it around, slight more concentration in this region, like I say. Then we can go back to the background layer, create a layer on top of that. Again, change it from the normal blend mode to the add. And again, we can start building in just a bit more of it, probably more appropriately down in here, because if you add it up into the other area, well, you're not going to notice it. It's not going to change much. This kind of effect works best when it changes and amends a darker layer underneath it. So it's useful when it has the background layer to bounce off and to amend, but then if you're doing it up in the upper region, it's got nothing to illuminate more. So to reserve this effect down in the lower areas, and have something to make glow in contrast with, and that's where it's gonna work best. Again, this is underneath some of the other layers that we've already added. So it's not gonna show through everywhere, which is really quite useful. Creates that sense of just depth of lots and lots of layers, of different things. And again, builds in that authenticity, that believability better. So a bit more of a concentration down here, as I was saying, that's where it's gonna work the best. Okay, go back to my layers, top layer, and create a layer on top of that. So now we're on layer eight, and this is where it starts to become more interesting. So we're going to perhaps stay on the add that we were using before, and with the same orange, we can start applying it over the top in places. Now, because it's gonna be more of a foreground element, I feel that perhaps the size of the foliage needs to be a little bit bigger. So it was on 3%, could nudge it up just into the 4%. Each percentage has a little wiggle room. We wanna make sure it's really only just nudged up into the 4% and it is at 60% opacity, which is probably more than enough. And we're just gonna tap in a little bit of this kind of illuminated leaf detail and it's gonna to start to cut in front of and obscure some of these tree branches and tree details, which again is gonna create the sense of real 3D depth, which is exactly what we're going for. So we can allow it to just interrupt some of these branches in areas. Now be careful with this because in addition to going over the tree branches, it's gonna to continue to illuminate everything in the background too. And then you're gonna get a discrepancy between this really nice orange and then this vibrant yellow right next to it. So that can be too much. So if you try to reserve it as much as you can for areas where it cuts in front of the branches and it doesn't matter if it extends a little bit into the background that's not going to spoil the effect but we are trying largely just to kind of interrupt and start to break up the dominance of some of these branches and we don't need to do a massive amount of this on this layer because I'm going to create a new layer on top of that and we're going to keep it on the normal blend mode and I'm probably going to go for the color at the end of the bottom row I want it to be slightly more subdued Keep the brush size and the opacity the same. So it's still at 4% size and 60% opacity. And I'm gonna build in some of these. Now, because these are slightly more foreground and probably in the shadow of the tree, not all of these are gonna be completely eliminated. And that is perfect because it creates that really nice contrast between foliage that's really in the shadow of the tree that's slightly closer and then those that are nearer the sun in a sense that really pick up on that light. And we can have that really nice interaction of the two. So we can just sort of dab some of these in, tap them in, 
in some sections, like this section up here, I think it's a really good place to add them, maybe more up here. We could even turn it up to the top end of 4%, again within that 4%, but just a bit further. Nudge it up to 70% opacity, and then just, yeah, a few taps in this area. Just, we want to create slightly more near to foliage, and that's working really nicely. And maybe some more over here too. Mix it in, go back to our colors. We've got an even darker color. So the next color in from the right is a, a ready color. And we can have that in the mix too. Start to mix and build this in, in conjunction. And already the effects, the layers are starting to really work for us, which is great. And don't be shy with this darker color. Just really start to layer things up a little bit. And again, with the brush size at 3%, maybe just turn it down to 50% opacity and you can just build in some of this dark color in the mix area too so it overlaps a little bit again don't be afraid to change the direction of the brush as required let's put it back up to four percent continue to build up these layers it really is just going to require some time just building and building until you start to see kind of the effects come through perhaps i'm going to start using some of the lighter colors too got this yellow which is fourth in from the right again and there's nothing stopping me continuing to use this brush perhaps over the top some of these branches so perhaps I'll even put the opacity up for that to about 70 well 80 percent perhaps and I can use that on top to just to sort of merge some of these foliage areas together so you've got some leaves that cut in front some of these branches it brings together that kind of background element and foreground detail all together. So again, we're still on the 4% size. Really layering this up. Again, find some branches that perhaps we just want to cut some of these yellow colors in front of some of these. So be selective. Find them some that you think, yeah, I could knock some of those back a little bit. And this is really just gonna bury some of these branches in and amongst these foliage shapes. And that will continue to build up this levels and layers of interest there's definitely no right and wrong with this necessarily it's more just about what kind of looks right compared to other things so keep building and from this color perhaps we'll go to this orange which is second from the left on the bottom row and i can again mix it in here so it's really going to pop and contrast compared to the dark slightly more subdued kind of maroon colors so the two together are going to work really quite nicely you just keep building them in together so you can put it down perhaps to the 3% if you feel it's necessary and just start again to just cut across some of these branches like this. And I feel like I need to go back to some of my other layers maybe, maybe some of the layers that are really in that background region. So layer six, for example, where we had those illuminated colors. So I'm gonna go back to that Stick with my leatherwood brush, but I am going to switch back to the yellow. In fact, no, we'll go for the orange, because when we use the orange, it really, on this effect, it has a yellow effect anyway. And we can just start to brush in some of this vibrant colour here in the background again. And crucially, it's behind these tree branches. Keep building in some of this luminosity. I especially want it in this region where the sun is going to be predominantly. Keep building some of this in. Maybe go back. A few layers even so got this very background layer or perhaps not that one we'll go to layer four i think layer four is quite a good one the blend mode is set to normal so perhaps we need to go and choose one of these yellow colors so the fourth in from the left is quite a good one for this and it's just going to kind of blend those really vibrant yellows and these oranges together a little bit more it's it is a bright yellow but it's just a hint more subdued than the really luminous ones and so it's just going to bridge that gap and distance between those two intensities. And I can just use this to bring them together a bit more. And crucially, yep, again, it's behind the tree branches that we've created. So we don't need to worry too much about its impact. And again, more areas up here that we can really just fill in a little bit. Definitely want to leave some of those blue areas peeking through, but I can start to just really build up the mass of that yellow and I could go even to the most vibrant yellow on the far left and just again just tweak and build up the intensity of this yellow in places 
and it is behind other things so it's just going to sort of peek through some of these gaps and around the edges of some of these darker colors which is really kind of cool it doesn't too massively impact the things that are already there we've got this weight of different textures and tones that are just overlapping and combining together which is really useful and layer five which was above that layer again we can go in with some of our darker colors so perhaps i'll go in with this color on the very end on the bottom and reduce it somewhat so we want some smaller foliage so maybe just nudge into three percent but only just and we could start to increase maybe the the impact of some of that in the background a little bit more in areas too maybe i want to put it back up to the four percent it seems to work best around the four percent actually so perhaps i'll just continue with that level of texture and just keep building it in a bit more blending it all together a little bit and it, it really is starting to come together quite nicely and quite satisfied with the overall effect i think it's starting to work back to the top layer I just feel it needs a little bit more so perhaps with this color still with the strength set to 80 percent and the size of the brush set to four percent i'm just going to build in some of this foliage so it really is just starting to build up in weight and texture up at the top regions i think that's starting to come together and i really like the effect and just some of this orange here second from the left in addition and just some highlights mixed in amongst the, that area as well we don't want it to become too monochromatic we have to make sure that we've got a healthy mix of those different tones okay i'm going to go to layer six which was the layer immediately below the tree branches and the tree trunk and i'm going to create a layer above that so it's layer 10 but it's underneath the tree branches again change the blend mode to add once more and on this layer i'm going to use the airbrushing soft brush set to around 30 percent size and five percent opacity and I'll go in with this orange, which is second from the left on the bottom row, and just in this area, start to tap in a few times with this really vibrant orange. And you can already see the difference. It's just bleaching out some of the dark colors where they may exist still. I'm gonna to go to the brush again, turn it down from 30 to 20, change from the orange to the yellow. Again, just tap in a couple of times, and that's probably sufficient. It just get rid of some of those darker tones and just really make sure everything in that area is quite light apart from those details that aren't the light above and i'm fine about those for now anyway and then i'm going to go to my tree trunk layer tree branch layer and create a layer above that tap on that layer and turn on clipping mask it then creates a little arrow that shows that it's linked to the tree trunk and tree branches but I'm also going to change the properties of that layer from normal to add as well. And what that allows me to do, add things to that new layer, but it will only add them within the areas where the tree trunk exists. So you can see that clearly when it reaches the end of the edge where the tree trunk is, it doesn't butter on any other detail. I don't however want what I've just done, so I'll get rid of that. What I do want is to go to the orange, turn the opacity down to 10%, and the size up to 10% on the soft brush with an airbrushing. And just where the light is now, I can just start to really bleach out some of that dark tone of the tree branches and tree trunk in a general hazy sense. So that kind of brings together the overall glow in that region. And that kind of works for that effect. But I will need to turn that down considerably to about 2%, stay at the 10% strength. And I just need to go in to those edges a little bit and just start perhaps a little bit more carefully removing the solid edge of that tree. I could even turn the strength up to something more like about 20% and just chip away a little bit at that tree edge. I want to subdue it, have it kind of disappear into the, the glow of the scene of the background. Just really need those tree edges to kind of dissolve into the light more so than the would do otherwise so anywhere where there's got a really strong light it just needs to around those edges kind of disappear into it a little bit it really helps that effect of the glow so you must make sure to go around these edges and kind of melt it away and we can even do it over here a little bit as required but not as much as here just a hint of it and we're going to change from the orange to the yellow 
and then just carefully around this edge if it hasn't quite softened enough you can just further enhance that effect as required anywhere it's got immediately this really strong sense of white around the edge or just behind it you just need to chip away at that edge a little bit so it's just something you have to do a little bit more gradually just remove that edge if you see like a really clear crisp edge to these branches then it's a good indication that it, it needs to be removed a little bit especially in those in this glowing area we could go to the adjustments Gaussian blur and if it's not quite smooth enough you could blur it in a little bit so not too much because it's just going to ruin the overall effect but maybe five percent that helps I could even go back to the tree trunk layer and with the eraser set to soft brush maybe at like two percent size and 40% strength opacity. I could even just go in and just slightly remove the, the harsh edges of those tree trunks as well. That again will further enhance that kind of look and that effect. And the combination is really starting to work, I think. I might even on that layer actually go to the Gaussian blur and just blur it in slightly, just to a couple of percent, just slightly soften in the tree trunk anyway, tree branches. What I'm going to do now is go to my top layer and create a layer on top of that. Change the blend mode from normal to add once more. And again, with the soft brush within airbrushing, and I'm going to put the size of the brush at about 3% and the opacity at 5%. And from this point where the sun is, I'm just going to do some straight lines that kind of cut down and obscure some of these darker features. And it's really important that obviously it's a layer above the tree trunks or on top of everything because this sunlight has to sort of pour in between the branches and it's really going to knock some of the branch back and just give it this sense of more believable depth. Well, all the branches are not on one flat level. They're really kind of pushes some things forward and some things back and these sunlight beams just really help with that. Now, the sun is a vanishing point, so all the lines join up at this point and you can extend that effect over to other parts of the canvas so maybe over here too just remember to join them up where the sun originates in our scene now i've not finished with the actual tree trunk itself so i'm going to go back to the tree trunk layer and put alpha lock on so this allows us now to go in with a different kind of texture and it's all going to be contained within the tree trunk itself but i'm going to be much more subtle than that I'm going to go in with some of these colors here so perhaps I'll start on the end color now it is quite a muted dark color but it's going to really pop in contrast with the dark black of the tree itself so I am going to use the soft brush turn it down to 2% size and quite low at about 25% opacity and I can just kind of follow along the course of some of these branches and just sort of tap in some textures we obviously have different textures of the bark and the, the moss that may be growing on it and it's just going to create this kind of mottled look perhaps as it goes and as it runs up and down and again we can alternate so we use that color perhaps i'll go for something very light second from the left and i can use this to just sharpen up a sort of sense of highlight on some bits so on this top edge now it could be really useful just to pick up the sense that it's reflecting the light obviously shining behind it and because we've got the alpha lock it's you don't have to be particularly neat with it really it's quite useful but we've got different tree trunks or branches rather that all kind of come in this area now, i'm doing the light mainly on this side so therefore this bit's going to be more illuminated perhaps as it comes over here you're just going to reach the top edge of these bits of the roots as well before they go underground and then just kind of hint at other things perhaps you don't need to overdo that not too much and it really starts to sell the, the believability of what we've created which is great go for the second from the right this nice gray color and again we can just further tap in some texture quite liberally without really having to worry too much because we've got this alpha lock on so it is quite forgiving and again we don't need to really worry too much now i've not used this one which is third in so it's the middle color so we must get some variety of tones and colors and just mix that in a little bit too so wherever you feel that the natural look is and balance of it entirely up to you i'll just go back to this very lightest color again turn it down a little bit to about 10 percent 
and just tap in one or two kind of textures, perhaps that are just in and amongst and around here as well. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the layer 10, which was the layer underneath the tree trunk, and I'm gonna click the plus symbol to create a layer underneath the tree, because I want to start adding some elements in the background. So I'm gonna use my leatherwood brush. I'm gonna to go to this green color at the end of the middle row. I'm gonna put it at the lowest part of 2% and about 50% strength opacity. And I'm just gonna start building in kind of not quite a horizon line, but it's certainly a base level where we're gonna start building in other ground features. So I'm just shooting that all the way across a few times. Doesn't really matter as it gets lower down. I might as well just turn it up to 4% and just start to fill some of this in. Go over it a few times. I'm not too concerned about that. So we just need to build in a dark color really, I suppose. And on that basis, maybe we should perhaps go to this dark color and build that in. We need to ratchet up the dark tone and everything else is gonna be sat on top of that, I, I imagine really. So you've got a base that's dark for all the shadows underneath things, but we're gonna start quickly applying things on top to lighten that. Okay, so from layer 13, create a new layer, layer 14, and on top of this dark background of foliage on the ground, we're just gonna create some more vibrant, colorful leaves to just lay on top. So with the leatherwood brush, predictably, and these colors down at the bottom predominantly, I'm gonna use this color at the end of the row, and I'm gonna set it to 4% size initially and about 50% opacity. And I'm just gonna start building in some of this. All the way across. I don't really want to stray too much above where the level of the tree is and then I'm going to start thinking about and then I'm going to start thinking about where the rays of sun might actually be hitting the ground and I'm going to preference some of these more vibrant colors in the areas where I think they're actually going to make contact on the leaves themselves. So I'm going to mix in some of these darker colors too so I've got the second in from the right put it to maybe about five percent. You're going to notice some of these really nice rich deep colors probably near the base of these dark colors. So that dark ground is only going to appear through in a sense. I'm happy for it to be mainly obscured by these other colors, but it does peek through in areas and that's enough. And then we go to this slightly more vibrant and lighter one third from the right. Maybe if I just turn it down slightly, it's about 3% just to control that a little bit more. And we're just really starting to build this up incrementally. Maybe your sun rays have pointed in slightly different directions than the example I'm showing you, and that's fine. You just put your lighter areas on the ground in a slightly different area. So I've used those three. I'm going to go for the fourth, so the middle colour on the bottom row. And I'm going to be a bit more controlled initially, so 2% size, and it is behind the tree, so I don't need to worry about cutting into the tree. I'm going to do this background area. So I'm imagining that the tree itself is perhaps casting a little bit of a, a shadow, but then there's maybe areas just towards the rear of the tree. Maybe we get some real highlight just hitting the ground over in this region a little bit more. So it's not just the rays that break free, also the ones that sit behind the tree a little bit as well. And then they can start to encroach further down in these areas as well. Maybe put it up to something like 4%. And start to bring it down into this region. It's still at 50% opacity strength, but we can bring it down into this area. I'm going to put it to 5% size and just bring it in over here as well. And just start to, you know, really bring out some of the foreground details and leaves. Perhaps I just have a channel here where got a large section that is really picking up the light channeling through all of this area I think that works we can keep building it up you don't have to do it in solid motions like this it can get a bit too much so you can do it in a series of taps perhaps I would just recommend that you do keep them going left to right because as soon as you start doing it upwards then those grains if you like or the, the shape of the texture is going to start pointing upwards which is not quite what we're going for so we're going to do it side to side maybe a tapping motion that is roughly speaking 
going largely in sweeping motions. So we can start building these in. So a real light area over here kind of works. And I'm thinking there's a ray here, so maybe a sun spot on the ground over here too, in a general sense. Not to say we won't have any of this light color here, because we will, but just not quite as much. It's just gonna pick up the light more significantly in that area. So we can just trail it off as it gets towards the center area. Have it a little bit, but then keep some of this in slightly more muted dark colors. Then just keep going over, re-emphasizing some of the light here. Perhaps I'll turn it down a little bit. So we're still in fire, so I'm gonna put it down to three. Therefore we can control it a little bit more. Over here. Go from my yellow to this really vibrant red. It's probably a little bit too much, which is why we're gonna use it very sparingly. So perhaps I'll turn it down to about 30%. Keep it at about 5% initially. So I want some of this coming into the very foreground and encroaching just a little bit from the side there, I think will work quite a lot nicely. Just a few in these center areas too. It's a subtle, or rather, it's not a subtle color, so we're going to try and use it subtly, not as heavily as we are doing those other colors. So you can get away with a really vibrant color in the mix, but you just don't want to use as much of it, obviously. So I've used this vibrant red, I'm gonna go for this vibrant orange now and do pretty much the same. Just start to go over and kind of blend in the effects. Again, it's okay to have some of this in the center area. It's not going to do any harm, but just not quite as much. And then we've used the orange, let's go for the vibrant yellow. I don't think we need much of this. It's just a little bit harsh compared to the other yellow, but we are going to use it a little bit, especially in this area. As noted before, it's a bit of a channel for the light. Maybe just a little bit here where it's perhaps just really making contact with the ground too. We can also imagine there's just a hint of more areas here. So perhaps I'll put it up to something like the 6% and also whack it up to 40% there and just bring in just a hint more over in various different areas with this yellow color. Perhaps we can also switch this white color second on the top row. And it seems quite an unusual color to be adding to the foliage, but we're really gonna get those highlights reflecting the real intense light on the ground in areas too. So we're gonna keep it at about, well, let's try the 50%. Might be too much. Let's try it 3% size, 50% opacity. And we're just gonna tap in where we feel we want its impact. So just go a little bit carefully with this. You can overdo it. So you imagine the sun being coming in here, just really creating some areas where you're gonna get that intense light reflected back, but use it judiciously, so not too much. An area coming in here, perhaps I'll even turn it up higher, so about 4%. Let's just turn the strength up to 60% as well. And yeah, tap in some areas here that correlate with those sun rays and just build it up a little bit. So I'm doing them quite big in the foreground and then I'm gonna reduce it back down to say 3% and work this a little higher up as well. Turn the opacity down to back down to about 30%. Turn it down to 2% size, and I'm just gonna try really to be careful and add it up here as well. Maybe just bring in a few long gestures, just quite a lot more of that actually in this region. I feel like it's really picking up the, the effect of the light hitting the ground there. I think that's helping more dramatically. The bright colors only get you so far, and then actually you're gonna need something that really kind of resembles the light that's coming through, and the light is super bright here, so you need something super bright reflected back. And then obviously, let's turn it up to 4% as it encroaches over here too. You're not gonna have it completely disappear, but you don't want it as dramatic. So you can just place in a few bits, perhaps go over a bit here more here as well. I think the white is a crucial part of this. It really does help with that sense of light pouring through and the kind of dappling on the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna Go to this black color that we were using before, still on the leather wood, but I'm gonna put it to three, no, 2% size and about 50% opacity. And I really want to, especially in the shadow of the tree, start shutting down some of the light in this area. We are creating something of a shadow area. It doesn't have to be over the top. It doesn't need to be too dramatic, but it's definitely some of the darker tones need to be in this area. It makes sense. Put it back up to 3%, maybe we need some 
coming in from the side as well so it's not all just in one area cutting across and then I'm going to turn it up to 6% size because there's no harm in having some of the larger textures being really nice and dark as well just tapped in and around go back to my yellow which is in the middle keep it at the 50% opacity and about 5% size I'm just going to have a little bit more of its impact here just randomly placed going for this white again maybe just ramp this up a little bit more here I feel like it is really working so a little bit more okay I'm going to go for the greens at the end of here still on the leatherwood brush but I'm going to bring in the different tones here in the background a little bit really mix in some of those greens in with the autumn colors I think it just helps project some of the warmth if you have something to contrast with so we've got some slightly cooler colors of the green and we've got the kind of more muted browns and grays and things for the background anyway but these greens help so I'm going to go for the middle of these three colors 2% size now, 50% opacity, just precisely or more precisely start to build in some of that green cutting across, make it irregular, could be like bushes and things like that. And then for the third from the right, which isn't really a green, it's more of an orangey yellow, but it is a little grayed out. So it gives that slightly more green color in comparison to some really warm bits. And we're just adding some variety for that background and then perhaps I'll go for that yellow again and really build in some of that for the background too where it's visible okay so largely that will do for the ground I'm going to go back to my layer 2 create a layer above that and I'm going to go back to my well I'll use the airbrushing medium brush for this and I'm going to go to the fourth color on the top row which we initially used for the background trees and I'm going to turn it to 2% size and I'm going to put it up to 100% opacity and some of these trees I'm just going to make a little bit more of in the background it's underneath all the layers so it's not going to interfere with anything else but I'm just going to make one or two of them just a little bit more substantial and dark perhaps the base of the tree a little wider so it just jumps forward a bit more find one or two that are really going to be prominent and make more of them I think that's going to help with the a sense that there's not just one thing in the background and give it a bit more believability something like this maybe join some of those tree trunks to the ground if they're looking like they're just floating a little bit now that we've completed most of the ground you can actually go ahead and root them to it if you feel like you want to leave some of them quite subtle then you can always turn the opacity down somewhat and just yeah use a lower opacity and i've helped so if we go to the very top layer and create a layer on top we're just fine tuning at this point so I'm going to do that I'm going to continue with the same color but turn the opacity down to 30% and and perhaps I can then just build in some of these tree roots so the they jump forward a little bit more I can also just add some sort of debris and broken shapes in that background area it doesn't need to be all consistent and flat let's create some broken pieces and things in there as well Maybe some low-lying branches and twigs that have all collected and fallen something like that and once more back to layer 15 where we did those tree trunks perhaps I'm going to with my artistic leatherwood brush go back to one of the more grounded colors I used so I'll try that one at the top the fourth and maybe just do some a slight more hint of foliage so I'm going to put it up to 70% opacity and just a hint more foliage here and there as well why not okay I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point I hope you've enjoyed following along if you are pleased with your results please make sure to tag me on Instagram if you post or join my Facebook group the links for those are down in the video description don't forget to give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe and don't forget that all-important bell notification thanks for watching I shall see you back here soon bye for now